because if something goes wrong or things do not perform as expected. What's up guys? Welcome to another amazing production of Alex Isidro. And today I want to talk to you about the best part of the engineering design process and what I've been through. And this is going to be solely based on my experience. And this is going to be a story that I want to tell you and that I want to give you some insight if you ever get to the point where you can make a decision on whether or not you should get into this field, I highly, highly suggest you get into it. But of course, you are going to be the one that's making the decision. So you definitely look into it yourself, research it yourself, be a critical thinker, and then make decisions based on what you find. But first, if you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Alex Isidro. And here we talk about engineering career and life analysis. And today, the words research and development. That's the part that I want to share with you today. The name is a little intimidating for some people, believe it or not. And so today, actually, I want to tell you a little bit of my experience. A couple of years ago, when I joined the research and development field, I didn't really know what to expect. Like I said, it sounds a little bit intimidating. And so it was uncharted territory for me at, the, at, that, at that time. And I started working or supporting a program program manager and I basically became a mini project manager and I started learning about cost I started learning about schedule and I started learning about technical requirements and meeting technical requirements and my job basically entailed as a project manager helping the engineers developing all the equipment because we were developing multiple pieces of equipment at the same time and so my job was to work with all of them and to make sure i help them reach the deadlines and solve any problems they had they were running into and because we were designing several pieces of equipment at the same time i got to see engineers in different teams and different projects get to the testing phase of their development process and you know as i mentioned before in the previous video i go through the whole development process when you start developing your requirements and then you go through your concept design you go to your preliminary detail and then you go through your prototype manufacturing and then you test it and then you deliver the product itself right and so i want to tell you that throughout the whole process of development the best part in my opinion is the testing part because that's when you start breaking things that's when things start failing but at the same time it's also one of the most complicated if not the most complicated phase because if something goes wrong or things do not perform as expected then you're in a pickle because you don't have much time left. You have to deliver the piece of equipment very soon. At the same time, at that point, you are almost out of money because you definitely have a budget. And so what do you do in that case? And so I personally think that that's one of the phases along with detail design when sometimes prototype or testing is also part of detail design, but it's in that phase when engineering and true engineering really takes place because you really have to make things work and if it breaks then you have to find another way to fix it or maybe sometimes you relax the requirements if it's deemed impossible per se right sometimes what you see in drawings or what you see in a computer sometimes in real life it's just not achievable sometimes and the reason we do that and the reason that happens is because when you accept the product it's all about safety right and so you want to make sure that the devices or the components that you are developing that you're designing as an engineer they're going to be safe to the public they're going to be safe for the people that are going to be using it and so you definitely definitely don't want to provide something that is faulty obviously that's one of the major or one of the basic core things that you learn in engineering school that whenever you design something then obviously you have to you have to test it testing 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 that's when things really come to to life and so the reason i'm telling you this story is because if you ever have the chance to get into the research and development phase or the research and development field as an engineer i highly encourage you to get into that that's when you're going to start seeing really cool things happen and then you're going to start blowing things up like one time we tested a valve and we took it to the limit and the valve it was a relief valve so if you anything if you know anything about valves a relief valve basically when it reaches a certain amount of pressure it opens and it starts relieving steam it was a steam relief valve i remember and when we tested this valve 
guys, the explosion was just so loud that I almost stuttered. I almost took off running because I wasn't expecting it and I never really experienced it, but it was so much fun. And so that's the insight I wanted to give you. If you ever get a chance to get into the research and development field as an engineer, highly encourage you to do it, look into it and talk to people that are doing it. And that way you can get a better understanding of what it really entails. And it's not as intimidating as you think it might be. And also to let you know that the best part of the whole engineering design process is the testing part, because that's when all the engineering, all the theory really comes to life. And then you start really proving whether or not you are right in your calculations, in your theory, and all your projections. And sometimes it's success, sometimes it's failure, but then you have to quickly recover because you can't just give up. You know, you're almost there, you're testing it, and whatever faults you happen to find, then you have to work through it. So, with that being said, it's really, really an interesting uh, perspective, if I say so myself. Uh, I wish I would have known this when I was younger, you know, maybe that gives you a little bit more direction where you want to go directly once you graduate from college.